Some metal albums are seriously overrated. Well, it's not very good, is it? What's up, metal and heavy music fans? Y'all asked me, what do I consider to be the most overrated metal albums of all time? And so these are my picks, but quick preface here. I enjoy pretty much all of these albums on some level and also respect their importance. I just enjoy starting controversial conversations as long as it's in good fun. So I'll be interested to see the comments. And I'll also be offering a constructive alternative for each album. That's that I'm gonna start right from the top, get some people mad, and say mayhem with De Mysteris Dom Satanus. Again, I understand the importance and the history, the downright like mythology of this album is important, but like somebody in the comments actually said, it's that element of it that's more interesting than the music, I would say. There are so many black metal albums from this era, even just debuts from the likes of Enslaved, Immortal, Emperor, Dark Throne, that I just just find to be much more engaging albums to listen to. If you want another album kind of in this vein, then again, I probably would go with one of the early Dark Throne albums, or also maybe something early from Gorgoroth. Next up, let's piss off some death metal fans this time and say Morbid Angel with Altars of Madness. Now, I know Mad Mike in particular is just absolutely dying right now, as are a lot of old school death metal fans out there, but just frankly, I don't find this album to be all that appealing. It's kind of similar to last one. It's a better album than that one. Musically, there are some interesting things going on here, and once more, of course, I respect its importance to death metal as a genre. I would never try to take it away from that. But honestly, like, there are just better death metal albums that I would prefer to listen to, and even within Morbid Angel's own discography. In fact, in the Discord, we've got quite a few of us who are on the domination train. Like, I think that that is probably Morbid Angel's best album. You're a total poser. You're not a poser. <laughs> and I think a lot of people are going to get pissed off at that too because it's sort of known as one of their lesser albums, but it just feels like an album people shit on for no particular reason either than it has a really crappy album cover and people pair it over the years that it's not that good. But I'm telling you, if you haven't listened to Domination in a while, go back and check it out because I promise you, like, it has some slappers, and they are super memorable, too. Next up, let's do a little thrash, right? We got Sepultura with Beneath the Remains, and also a little bit Chaos AD. Honestly, I'm not a big early Sepultura fan in general, because to me, it's just sort of like secondhand thrash metal doing the same thing that everybody else was doing, except not as well. There's nothing inherently musically about these albums that I feel like I can't get from another album from like the Big Four's early records or especially like stuff from Germany I'm much more into. Like I'd rather listen to early Creator than this. But if I'm gonna pull from Sepultura's discography, and this is gonna be another one I think that's gonna make people about as mad as the Morbid Angel one, but I would go with Roots. <laughs> Serious? And given there were some people in the comments that said that album's overrated, and I know the purists like absolutely hate this album because they're like going new metal or whatever, but to me, this is where Sepultura becomes interesting because they form their own identity. They're taking all those regional influences and turning it into something interesting that nobody else is doing. Plus, you got Mike Patton guesting, and that's always worth something. Alright, next up with some math core and metal core, we've got the Dillinger Escape Plan with Calculating Infinity. As many of you regular viewers know, I'm a huge The Dillinger Escape Plan fan. I've done a tier list on their full discography, and I don't think they have a bad album. Like I said, I don't think any album on this list is bad. And again, this is another album that's like formative, very important to Mathcore in particular, forging itself as a genre and actually becoming a thing. But if you ask me, it's my least favorite in their entire discography to listen to because we've just moved so far beyond this. It's kind of fun to revisit in terms of like historical value, but if I really want to listen to a Dillinger Escape Plan album that I think is bringing something new and creative and like some more variety and shows their maturity, I'm gonna go with Miss Machine or really any of their other albums, but that just happens to be my personal favorite. All right, as if one nuclear megaton bomb on the death metal community wasn't enough. We're gonna go big here with death and human. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. I think I literally just heard a whole bunch of people switch away from the video because their, their tiny puny little brains just couldn't handle that one. But if you ask me, this album, again, very important to the genre. Very well played. Lots of great performances here. But when I'm listening to their discography, it feels very like 
cold and disconnected and that's subjective which all of this is like everybody has overrated is such a subjective term for that reason like albums just hit people differently so i'm not saying again that this is an album people shouldn't listen to i'm just saying for me personally it just doesn't connect if i really want to recommend a death metal album that i think does these same ideas in a better way where the musicianship and the production and then also that connection is stronger then i'm gonna go with individual thought patterns personally all right before before we move into the top five though, I wanted to share at least a few audience comments because I did pull you all in terms of what you thought were the most overrated albums. There were a lot of responses, but some big ones that I saw a few of. Power Slave was up there a couple times. Bonded by Blood from Exodus was also on the chopping block from a few people, and I kind of agree with that one. It's not the best album. <laughs> it's good, but it's like I don't know, it's held up on this pedestal and you see it on a lot of lists. And that was something that I was considering when I finally put my top 10 together, is I didn't want things that were super new and modern, because there are other th stuff from your comments too, like Spirit Box's Eternal Blue, which I agree with, but I wanted to go with the albums that continuously end up on like the top 100, top 50 of like Rolling Stone and Loud Wireless and find the ones that I just don't think are that enjoyable. They get held up on that pedestal. One I didn't agree with, but I wasn't surprised to see a few people say was Opeth's Blackwater Park. Toxicity from System of a Down, I could kind of see this one too. Personally, I prefer the self-titled overall. I think it has more to offer, but yeah, totally makes sense. A couple people said Master of Puppets from Metallica and that that's a big one. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. I'm more of like an and justice for all feeling like that one maybe gets elevated on the same level of Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning when maybe it shouldn't be. Someone said pretty much every Lamb of God album and I can totally see that especially with like the trajectory of their career lately although I do love As the Palace is Burned. Slipknot was also up there too in particular volume three which I kind of agree with. All right but moving into my top five though the next one is going to be In Flames with The Jester Race. Now it's really easy to shit on In Flames later albums which I've definitely done during the tier list although I was pleasantly surprised revisiting some of those and some of the ones that I enjoy but if we're going to the early career stuff that people really, again, hold up there and elevate as this amazing thing, I'm not that big on the Jester Race. I find it to be kind of boring, which I know is sacrilege. Again, I get the importance of it. It's a very important, formative, Gothenburg, melodic death metal album, but I just think that they have better examples of that. So for me, I would rather recommend somebody listen to either Colony or Horacle, because I think you get a lot of similar ideas, but performed much more effectively with more dynamic range and just more to engage you in the entire experience. All right, going for probably the most modern one on here, but when I came across it scrolling through different people's lists, I knew it had to be the one, and that is Deaf Heaven with Sunbather. I honestly just don't get what people see in this album. Like, it's definitely not bad. It's enjoyable. It's Again, kind of like an important record in pushing that black gaze and post-black sound into the mainstream, and so many other artists have come out and copied that style at that point. Like, that that was the album, and everybody knows that album cover in your head the minute you hear it, whether you like it or not. But it's another one that I just am kind of like, eh, I, I find it to be kind of dull and just not that great, and I've heard so many better examples of this sound evolve. So me, I would recommend, and I've recommended this a lot last year, is the band Mol from Denmark, and they're, you could either go with their latest album, Diorama, or their earlier album, Jord. They're both equally fantastic, and I just think that they push these ideas to a higher tier and make them more interesting. All right, going back to the old school now, we have Bathory with Under the Sign of the Black Mark. And this is another one that's going to make all the black metal fans seriously pissed and maybe unsubscribe. And you know what? If you're that upset by just one person's opinion on the internet, then bye Felicia. Formative, yes. Important, yes. I love the imagery, the album cover. I enjoy listening to this album, too. Like, it's an upper-tier album in their discography and kind of in the genre, but I just think that if I'm going to reach for a Bathory album, what I'm really going to recommend is Bloodfire Death, because I just think it does all of this way better and just is more consistent throughout. I feel like there's a lot of filler in Under the Sign of the Black Mark, but maybe that's just me. All right, we can't let Grindcore get out of this unscathed either, so my next one is going to be Napalm Death with Scum. Some might argue we couldn't even have Grindcore without this album, and I wouldn't disagree with you. I don't think it's a bad album, but 
going back and re-listening to it, and I have been re-listening to a lot of older discographies lately in preparation for new albums that are coming out. And this was another one that just struck me as very average. Like, we've progressed so far beyond this sound that I just don't find it that enjoyable to listen to. It's important historically, but I just don't think it's that impressive in terms of the album. For me, if I'm going to recommend a Napalm Death album, it's honestly any of the post-2010s albums in particular. Like, I think that they're really onto something, and they've just been getting better and better with each of those in terms of the experimentation they're bringing in, but then also the straight-up grinders are just, like, stronger, they're better produced, they're better orchestrated, they're just more, like, balls to the wall, they've got that bite to them. They're just better. They're just better in every way, if you ask me. And then finally, I'll bet some of you can even guess. Maybe before I say this, pause it and type in the comments, what do you think is going to be the number one pick here? And I'm gonna lay it on you. We're back to thrash. Slayer, Rain and Blood. Fool this man! No! I love this album. It is one of my top three Slayer albums of all time. It's pretty consistent. There's a lot of things that are really great about it and really important. And of course, that Raining Blood riff is going to be forever cemented <laughs> in pretty much every metal guitar player's brain as something that they at least attempted to learn early on <laughs> when they were doing that. But I think that, again, Slayer have better albums. If I'm going to elevate one, and I was pleased to see this one also end up on quite a few lists too, it's going to be Seasons in the Abyss. I just think it's a more dynamic and interesting album that offers a little bit more variety, a little bit more matured songwriting. I love the album cover too. Like there's just a lot to love about that one that I would say it doesn't get as much credit as Rain and Blood. Like you hear Slayer and immediately like that's the album that pops into people's minds and I get it, but I just think Seasons could use a little bit more love too. But y'all let me know down in the comments, what do you think are your most overrated metal albums and where do you disagree with me and why? I'd love to start a conversation down there. You can also check out this video I did with Quest for Metal on our most disappointing albums of 2021. And hey, I have merch, so if you want to get some awesome shirts with a very cool Skeletor theme design from Curly Art, then you should definitely get on that. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.